Right. So in our last uh, session of the quarter, right, that just means there's a one week break before we get started again. Um, we're going to be working in charcoal, and I wanted to just review for people the difference uh, in the kinds of charcoal mediums you'll want to be using. Because, of course, I know people have different ideas about charcoal. Charcoal comes in different packages, yada, yada, yada. Um, the kind of charcoal you're going to want to be using is, is burnt wood. It might be called vine. It might be called willow, which is grapevine. It might be called willow, which is willow vine, which willow bark, willow tree, which has been burnt. So this is literally burnt wood, and it should have a very light feeling. Um, it might be shaped in several different ways, but the key is that if you lay it down on paper like this, you should easily be able to erase it, uh, ideally with your kneaded eraser. Now the kneaded eraser is kind of a soft eraser. See, so I can get rid of all of it without really seeing any strong lines. Just again, eh, it gets a little mushy, right? I can put that line down and then I can get rid of it. I can put that line down and get rid of it with my hand. Now, the things that don't work for this medium that we're trying are charcoal pencil. So you'll observe if I take a charcoal pencil and I put a line down, I can't erase it. I can't erase it, not really, the line stays there. So if you can see this line, then you're using the wrong kind. And the other thing that could happen, and let me get as a comparison. So you'll see in my right hand, I have charcoal, and in my left hand, I have compressed charcoal. So they look very similar and it's deceptive. You might also have something like, um, like a thin bar that's quite hard. So the compressed charcoal is heavier and denser. Uh, and also when it makes a nice dark area here, but when I try to get rid of it, I can't get rid of it. See that? So what you want is uh, this kind of softer charcoal, easier to erase. I am working on something called newsprint, which is literally the paper that they, um, the paper that they uh, print newspapers on. And uh, for those of us who remember that time when we read the newspapers, I remember my first newspaper job, like there wasn't any, no one was even online. I was, it was 1990. Um, so, uh, so that's our review of materials. Uh, you want to be using these prints. And as usual, when we start with charcoal, you're going to take one of these soft charcoal bars. And I want you to cover the whole, so we're doing what's called toning. Instead of starting without the darks and moving to the lights, we're gonna like start with lights. <laughs> There's a line here because I folded up my, I'm gonna do this instead, I folded up my newsprint so that it would look a little bit smaller. Just fit a little bit more. Uh, and let me send this across so you guys all right, well, you guys have it. Uh, okay. And as usual with the pansy, so we're going to focus on this guy, and then you guys are going to include as much or as little of this background as you want. As usual, when we focus on the pansy, we're starting just like everything else we do, we're kind of starting with the sort of outside edges, the envelope, as it were. Like if I were to make an envelope, special envelope for this pansy, what would the shape of it be so it could fit just perfectly? And then as usual, I'm gonna run a line down the middle so I can find my sort of how tall and how wide my pansy is. Um, if, here, I'm gonna pop up here once again. If you do not have a printout, which is totally likely, um, and, and this is something you would like to move towards too. You can put your computer like straight up like this, the way my hand is, and you can hold your arm out and you can kind of find the halfway point just by looking. You don't actually have to touch the paper. You don't have to have a printout in front of you. So can you see my arm? Did you lose that? Oops. 
Yep. It looks like right above here is where the, and what that means is that if you can't write it down, you're gonna be kind of constantly checking, right? Your marks, you'll be checking this one to make sure you've got it right. Uh, I'm gonna mark it down for you. Observe also. Observe also that this little triangle, this center is slightly below the halfway point. It's not at the halfway point. And then if I draw a line across at the halfway point, oh yes, and let's find our quarters. It's about here. You see how I'm checking my quarters in several different ways. I'm checking to see if they're each the same size. Two, three, four. So the quarters give us some interesting information about where petals are, about where our dark area ends down here. Um, and then of course, we can also check and see how wide, how tall, it, how wide it is. So I can see that this, the width of this flower is a little bit higher than the three quarter point. If I were to mark that, it would look like about here. Here's the quarter in orange and the width All right, holding my arm straight out. I'm not touching the paper. But I'm checking. My thumb here in this case is at the outer, the right edge. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So when I finally get over here. Yeah. Hmm? Do you think everybody got muddled about the time? Um, I mean, I've been telling them for weeks. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, where here's Julia, here's Francesca. Oh. Hi, Julia. I think we're all here. I, you know, I think people are tired, Sandra, and probably need a little bit of a break. Also, spring is happening. You know how it is. Spring is happening, and <laughs> oh, here it's cold. <laughs> it's also just because it's in the it's a different time, right? So you're kind of doing you've got other commitments that you have to try and free up from. Right, right. Particularly those evening commitments. Um, that's why it's always good to take a break. I feel like okay. So when we come onto the paper, I'm kind of moving a little bit to the right and I'm creating a line that pretty much takes up the whole composition vertically. So it's definitely bigger than what's happening over here. I know it doesn't matter and I'm using my eraser to mark rather than my, um, rather than my, uh, my actual pencil, right? So we're, we're using these softer, sort of light areas, uh, way of erasing, subtracting to kind of get to where we want to go. Uh, now I'm going to find my halfway point. That, of course, you've got your paper in front of you. So there, that is easy. And then I'm going to find my quarter points. As you can see, I'm testing them. Are they all the same size? And then if you remember correctly, I'm gonna mark this. Just above the three quarter point is the width. So I'm going to, at the halfway point, mark a line across. Then I'm gonna double check it and make sure. So this flower is a little bit shorter than it is tall. Right. And Bettina, I wanted to like sort of, uh, and I'm marking it here with my charcoal. You don't have to, I'm marking it so I can see it and you guys can see it better. Bettina, I wanna tell you, I observed 
that I've realized that some of the questions you were asking me are about this measuring process, which is different than if you don't have something in front of you, how do you measure, right? From the computer, from life, right? From when you're just trying to measure this. So a lot of the questions that you've had about this measuring, how do you know this from this, uh, is that you're like having to, I, I actually have the printout in front of me to show you, but that's a little bit of a crutch. You don't have, you know, ultimately you want to move to not having it so that you can kind of holding your arms straight, sort of see, right, sort of measure. And then of course you don't have the marks. You have to kind of keep going back to check on them, which is really the sort of evolution of your drawing skills. Does that make sense? I've been thinking back on all the questions you've been asking and I'm like, oh, that's what she was asking. I'm so sorry. I don't, you know, sometimes I make these things and I don't even realize they're, like uh, it was another student who was asking another question in a different class. If that does that make sense to you? It does. And um, when I tried to get away from the printout, like right now, I'm trying to realize. I think it's I a would, challenge. It's a challenge because I'd have to roll really far away from my computer because because the image on my computer is really small. <laughs> but have you tried so. making it bigger? How could it, I, you should be seeing the Zoom screen pretty big. Yeah, I mean, I'm on a laptop. I mean, so, I'm on a laptop too. I mean, when I look right, at so this- when I, when I was measuring this just before the, the, the whole, you know, it's like the tiniest part of my pencil that I'm working with. <laughs> really? That's interesting. Yeah. Can this you take a picture of the screen that you're looking at so I can see? Because maybe you have your screen set up in the wrong way. I'm looking at my computer. It's just a small laptop. And I'm looking and I'm kind of able to do this much. Yeah. And I don't have to have get that far. So I have a feeling there's something not quite right. You're in gallery view. Yeah. Are, you in, are you in gallery view? Well, listen, she can't. I've, I'm controlling with spotlight. I control this. I control oh, okay. this. I control oh, okay. what you're looking at. All of you should be looking at this big. I'm in gallery view because I'm. How are is you that doing possible? something else? Well, but you shouldn't be able. Uh, you should all be in. You should all be. If I'm spotlighting, uh, that's what everybody should be seeing big. We can we can switch back to gallery if we want. I sometimes do that if I'm painting a different subject so I can see all of you. It feels like I'm painting with a crowd. That's so interesting. <laughs> so I still have to, that should not be the way it is. That is so weird. I mean, it changes it for you. Oh, I you see your point. Right. I see it. You're totally right. Yeah, your problem, Bettina, is you're, in, you're probably in gallery view. You should be in speaker. Uh, you, should, you, should you should be in speaker view. No, she's in speaker view. She's I'm in speaker. speaker view. Yeah, you are. I I see the picture. Yeah, that's how big my it is for me. All right. I mean, it's it's fine. I I, think I mean, I, you should be able to measure. Uh, it you, should be easier to measure because it's smaller. But so you know, you one one thing that may help is that on top of that, I have an iPad where I'm seeing the actual subject as big as possible. Mm. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, so I There's the clap. Yes, you need even more technology. <laughs> wow. Or else a printout. Or you a see, print. it's good for us to review this stuff because I'm like assuming that you're having a certain kind of setup. Oh, that's so interesting. I just didn't realize until this minute that you could still be in gallery view. Um, I mean, I could, anyway, I, I knew that if, oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, you've got it with you. But the idea is to move away from those printouts and be able to just look on the screen. That's sort of the goal ultimately. Um, but I'm glad we talked about it because it's, you know, setup is everything really. Um, all right. So once you've got this, go, why don't you guys send me this so I can see your measurements and make sure, sort of double check them and make sure they're correct. You don't have to put the marks on here unless you want to. I'm just doing them so that you can see them better. And then, uh, and then we'll go from there. I like to think about drawing, particularly this way, as um, uh, 
I like to think of drawing, particularly this way, as kind of a carving out experience rather than going from within and moving outwards, right? We're carving in. We're carving in the way you would carve a, um, if you were working with a piece of wood or you're working with clay, right? You're working with three dimensions. You wouldn't start out at the center here. Let's see. Oh, so me. Yeah, I'm sending you mine. I think it's uh, working Julia, already. Julia, this, your width needs to be much higher. It should be higher than the three quarter point here. Here's halfway. Your width needs to be as wide, it needs to be wider. Okay, I missed I missed the beginning, so I right. obviously got that bit wrong. <laughs> Thank you. You're a little monster. So, Sandra, one of the things I'm observing. I think a bottom petal is too wide. But, yes, it is. But so I don't know on I'm which side it's too wide. Uh, it's a little bit long. So, one of the things I'm observing, Sandra, is that a lot of times with pansies straight on, this center is a little bit below. So the bottom, so you're, it's it, the, the left brain wants to center everything perfectly, but observe where this is. Oh, here's my girl here. Hold on just one second. Sorry, beauty cat. Hi, come on sweetheart. I love what Leah, Leah takes care of cats. Mm -hmm. Hi baby. Ooh. My friend has COVID at the moment, Sandra, and she thinks she's given it to her cat. Oh, that's a problem. I mean, the worst thing with cats are getting things like that is uh, if they can't smell, they can't, they won't eat. Yeah, he's not eating, and, eat, and he's really congested. And, and there's only so many days they can last without eating because it damages their liver very quickly. Mm. So right. the thing to do is to actually warm up the food, put it in the microwave for a few seconds, it makes that it smells much stronger. Tell her that. Mm, good idea. Good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Francesca, as well, yours needs to be kind of a, a little bit wider than the three quarter point. So your this needs to be a little bit wider. Right? If you measure it, you'll see. It should yours, be a little bit wider. It should um, be a little bit wider. Uh, let me check. Excellent, Patsina. She has got it. There we go, Julia. Uh, believe it or not, Julia, a little bit. Well, let me see. Hold on. It may be the angle because it's on a slope. Uh, no, it's still a little bit wider on each side. It should be a little high. It's a little, little taller than the three quarter point, right? The three quarter point is here. Should come a yeah. little above that. Oh, and it's above it. Oh, okay. Yeah, just a little. Check it, and you can see. Right, check it with your measurements, and you can see that. Yeah, it's a little bit wider. You know, don't ask, don't trust me. Do like also check. Be feel free to like check it yourself because that's like, um. The, this that's the way of really starting to get into this rhythm of drawing, right? So, right, with this idea of carving things out, we start with the bigger shape. So if you were making like a sculpture of this pansy, this would make much more sense to you, right? We would start by car carving these outer shapes before we start getting into this business in here and trying to do both. So why with drawing? So we don't really wanna do anything different with drawing. With drawing, we're starting by carving out the negative spaces, right? So I'm gonna start by kind of sketching this bigger shape here, right? Using my grids as my guide. I can see in some places, it's not exactly square, It kind of goes straight like up here before it curves in. Same over here. 
So observe, there, it's not exactly a circle. It's kind of like straight lines here, curve them here, bring up. Right, so if I'm starting to carve from stone or from clay or from wood, I would start with this shape. That makes sense, doesn't it? Totally makes sense. Um, then the second thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my quarter marks. Let me mark those in red so you can see them to help me place where these outside shapes are. So over here, for example, if I go, and notice I'm using my eraser. So if I go over here, I can see that that's kind of this bottom part of this little triangle here lines up with my quarter point. You know, I might have to thin that out. So if I get, if I kind of lose too much, I can go in and darken again. Sometimes it's a little hard to control with the eraser. The eraser gives these kind of thick lines. I can see that this one kind of comes below this little triangle. Most of these things that we're starting with are triangles, right here. This starts about here, comes almost all the way in, and then down. There's a little one here. And then there's this big one that kind of straddles the halfway point. I'm gonna sketch these out, you do not have to. I want you to really see them. You can use your eraser. The only reason I'm doing this is that so you guys can actually see it clearly. It's a little tricky to see with the eraser. There you go. Now, if I, I can observe at this point that maybe this needs to come out a little bit more, super easy to fix, right? If I start from in here and I start mucking around, then it's like harder. Then when I come in, I'm gonna do the, try to do the rest with, then I can kind of come in here, right? And get and continue my petals. I can get in and start doing this stuff. I can continue to use my guidelines. I like using um, the eraser just because it's so forgiving, you know? If I'm like, oh, I totally need to move that around. I need to move this down a little bit. This needs to come over. Right, I can do that. So you see how the shape, we're carving the shape out from the outside and going in. That is, when I use the term construction in drawing, that's very often what I'm talking about. And this. Observe, these petals are not lined up. This one's lower than this one, right? Um, our left brain might want us to, I feel like this is not wider, a little bit wider. Our left mind, brain might want us to, and I'm just looking to see here, yeah, might want us to even these out, right? So you might draw them even, even though they're not. That's the kind of thing the left brain would do. <clears throat> Hi, Osiris, nice to see you. Nice to hear and see you. Yes. 
Sorry to hear about your hubby. Musician, so he plays bass and all string instruments. So after a while, their ball, their uh, you know, the ball joint in the top of the shoulder. Oh, so this yeah. is the second one. He already had the first one. Yeah. Dang. It's a little bit of a. You know. Once you've gotten those bigger shapes, now we can start to move to the smaller shapes. this. So you'll observe one of the really great things about pansies is how fantastic the contrast is between light, medium, and dark. I want you not to obsess. You can see this is a medium to dark. This is a light. This is a dark. I want you not obsessing about all of this fluffy business here. You're going to draw these shapes as I have them iterated here, simply. You just want to know kind of where everything starts and ends. Here's your little triangle, right? And we, where it gets interesting is where you start to delineate working the edges of those shapes. Yesterday, everybody did a great job with this, but they also really found it harder than they thought. <laughs> I would say, I would say, that is exactly what happened. I mean, people did as, as usual, fantastic, but here's where mine is. Here is the actual sketch with all the lines. So you're gonna draw these shapes like the orange lines. You're not gonna draw them like the dark, how the dark meets the light yet. And you can do them if you want, uh, just using your eraser. Here is this kind of light area. Francesca, how does that new stuff feel? Oh, it's it's a bit weird, but it's okay. It's but weird, shall we, right? I thought so. Yeah, a little bit. But shall I I do the um, like the pedals with the um, with No, the I use black your eraser if no. you can. Unless okay. you're really struggling to see them, use your I have them in so you can see them. Okay. Well, you'll eventually go and use them, but you can see that this okay. process is to kind of map out everything in this very loose way. There we go. So we'll have something that looks a little like this, <laughs> like this series of concentric circles. I'll be right back, I guess. Oh my God, that new cat is so cute with Muka. They're so cute together. Oh, that's nice. They're, they're exactly the same personality type. They even look the same, except she's sort of different markings, right? One's yeah. Calico and one's sort of a Siamese, but they, they just sit there and lightly, there's no screaming. There's no cat screaming. You know, Muka really screams when Hermes jumps on her. No screaming. They just kind of look at each other and then slowly approach and snip each other and reach a paw out and pull it back. And 
it's pretty fantastic for cats. It's you know, adorable. They're just personality wise, very similar. They're so similar. Well, that's mine. Thank you. Yeah, it's cute. Of course, now there's another one hanging around outside. This is bad, you guys. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> I could collect quite a lot of cats this way. <clears throat> Cat mama. Cat, well, you know. Hey, the queen of the cat mamas is in Washington, D.C. So <laughs> are you on board for adopting this cat? Well, we are, I'm keeping, I'm. Uh, You're fostering it. I'm, I'm kind of fostering. I mean, I'm, I'm basically making sure she's safe, right? So she, she does sleep outside. However, if it was but cold, it I would in. put her in my studio. It's gonna move in, like in winter and so on. It's yeah, in. like probably into the studio. I did promise Rob that I would not let her move into our 250 square foot basement, but yeah, 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 in general. All right, go ahead and send we'll this. Around. Yeah. Um, here is where, uh, Francesca, you're gonna really enjoy how this medium works. I know it looks rather mushy here. Um, but then here is where we start to, so now I can use the edge of the charcoal, right? That's to get easy, some real easy. darks in there. Look at what happens just when I add that. Look at how my flower starts to shape in this absolutely crazy way, right? So I'm kind of darkening, 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 darkening. And then, here, I'm kind of with my finger pulling out, using the edge. See how I can create these nice edges that kind of mimic what's happening here. I'm gonna go in and kind of darken a little bit here. So you get to kind of go back and forth between, right? So it's a little, it's like light here. It's kind of a medium dark on the outside. Observe that the light also has, observe I can use my finger to soften things. Yes, it's messy. It's totally worth it. That's what we find with charcoal. <laughs> the mess is absolutely worth it. This for me, when I learned to use this material in this way, using this toning method, this is the moment I went, oh, I can draw. Because to me, this is more like how a painter approaches things. Right? It's sort of blocks of color, light and dark shapes. You're kind of focusing on the edges. And now you kind of get to go back and forth between them. See, I can go back in with my eraser. Um, if I want to get really fancy, I can take my electric eraser. Uh, don't get jealous here. This is a fantastic thing, but I want this to be darker. See how I can get really light if I use my electric eraser. Right, I can kind of bring in some of that. I can get like really light, but you can get fairly light as well. So really it's about the edges. I'm gonna remove this one so you guys can see what's happening kind of in here. And observe. Chicken, mommy, chicken. We want our chicken, right? I can come in here. No, you have to go through with that. You have to do it. Right? See how I'm starting to, and then with a few contour lines, right? These strong lines, I can maybe do them around the outside. I can maybe do them in here. I can maybe do them here. I'm starting to look at how much definition I get with this pellet. 
so really this is a practice of paying attention to the edges. Oh, maybe that's too hard. I don't know if I want that strong strength in there. So this is your practice today. It's kind of a wash on, wash off. <laughs> right? So yeah, if you want to, you can outline your petals. It's easier to see. Francesca was asking about that earlier. If that makes it easier at this point, you can. But you'll probably find that you'll want to kind of get rid of those. And my recommendation is to really focus on these darks first, because that is where, and observe what I just did there, I kind of lost my light. Observe where these uh, darks, particularly the ones on the sides kind of start and end, they have a slightly different pattern. There's more light around them. We up here. Right, so you want to pay attention to that. I go from the dark to kind of the medium dark on the outside edge, and then I try to work on my light edges between that sort of light edge that's coming in between. No, I can brush my finger. I can use my finger. I can use the edge. You have kind of options for how Here, I really need to go in and I use my needed eraser. If you find that your needed eraser gets kind of black pretty easy, right? Covered with charcoal, you can stretch it like silly putty. You can kind of shape it too if you want to into something with a more pointy edge, right? So I can kind of go in here. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'll take a look in a second on the thread. I just want to make sure the basic. It becomes a little bit of an obsession. You probably see. You can see that toning the paper kind of helps us start to define our lights and our mediums and our darks because the toning is kind of a dark medium, which is what the outside shape of most of the petals is. Darker in some places. And notice that the detail is really these soft edges for the most part. Oh, see, I have to get darker in here. See how I can kind of go back and forth. Oh yeah, that's looking badass. Really great. Sorry, listen to me, I'm all like, oh, I love my drawing so much, but I just love this process so much as, uh, as uh, Francesca is observing, it's really weird. But for me, it, it has always made more sense than drawing with a pencil. Observe that in a few places, the outline of the um, petal is in light, actually. So up here, for example, there's kind of this little light edge. You may or may not be able to get that. Yeah, it's kind of a light edge all around. This is way easier to do in painting. Okay, Sunday. But we'll do what we can. All right. 
see how that light edge kind of helps things. And then I can start working in on the background. Now notice the background is basically the lighter mid-tones. There's a couple flowers in there too. You can try and get those flowers if you would like. Leah, do you wanna look at our outlines before we start darkening? Uh, let me see. Thank you. Oh yeah, these are looking great, you guys. Looking good. Try it. Do it. Go for it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Get start getting dark. Get jiggy with it. <laughs> I think you're really gonna enjoy this process. Um. So. Uh, Oh, yep, there's my coffee. So uh, let's talk oh. about the next, let's talk about the next quarter. So we will have a week off between classes um, next week. Uh, there will be no art classes. Uh, our first <laughs> art class will be Tuesday, April 5th, uh, abstract art. Um, and then we'll go back to our regular schedule. You will be coming at the regular time because by then Europe and, um, uh, and Mexico will have, you know, gone to daylight savings. Um, and uh, uh, I thought this class, we would move to doing animals, working on animals for three months. I thought like the flowers, you know, you'll find that going from petals to, uh, to fur and feathers is a very natural movement. So that was my suggestion. I don't know if you, how you guys feel about that, but I thought that would Sounds be- Sounds great. Yeah. I know how, actually I should say, I know how Santa feels about this. <laughs> and it's good. It's like a really good one. I'm excited about it. So we'll spend, um, I might do, I'm trying to decide if I wanna go back to using um, pencil or charcoal. I think we'll take that class by class. So if everybody in the class would like to see, if I have a bunch of new people, we might start in pencil and then move back to charcoal. However, I want everyone in these classes to feel like once I've introduced a technique or a medium, you can stay in it as much as you want. So even if I'm doing the demo in uh, pencil, you can totally stay in charcoal if you like charcoal. And I would encourage that. Um, so anyway, we'll be spending three months working, drawing animals. And I think that'll be a nice break. And then I thought we might go to landscapes and then in the fourth quarter of the year, cityscapes. Um, everybody's nodding. Yes, 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 yes. Let's do that. I'm we'll go very back to about cityscapes. What's that? I'm very excited about cities. I think it'll be great. And I think by the fall, by the winter, so that'll be like what? That'll be September right or late late September, or October that'll be October um we'll have been handling the more gentle perspective issues of landscapes and it'll be the structure of cityscapes is going to be really fun um as well uh remember that April 10th uh 24th and the May 1st we have the procreate workshop going on uh on Sunday at various times oh yes and in fact the other thing I wanted to do was make sure you guys <clears throat> Everybody here has the right times for, um, I'm gonna put the schedule down for, uh, for when classes start. So I'm gonna upload that, I might as well. There we go. That is a PDF that should have, let me double check it to make sure it has all the right times. It does not, ignore this one. <sighs> let me see if I can find the one that's correct.
but he's looking good. <clears throat> this is a really fun, this should be a pretty fun um, uh, subject matter and you should have a lot of success with it. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, I'll show you. And Bettina, if you want to enroll in any of the mini courses, you can totally use your um, art pass the same way you enroll for these classes. It costs the same, it's the same. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay, let's see. Let me get this across. All right, this should be the right one. There we go. Um, so this starts time. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, particularly those of you who don't register here, hold on. Well, I'll do it at the end of class when you're not looking at the subject. Second. Go ahead and send it in. Oh, I see people are. Oh yeah, that's, uh, so Francesca, pay attention to the shape of this. Don't left brain it, right? Look at where the lights come in. This looks good, but look at where your light is actually coming in on either side here. Okay. Yep, pay attention to that shape, right? Yeah. It's yeah, really, but right. nice. Are you enjoying it? It's a very satisfying, isn't it? Yeah, 
But is um, it normal that uh, I have a, like a black powder? Yes, that's very normal. Okay. You okay. should look like it's Easter Sunday all the time. So, some one of you is going to get it on your face. Okay. <laughs> the, one, the one who usually loves it the most that gets like gets it on their face because <laughs> you like kind of are rubbing your face. I was that person. I will say like right at the beginning. <laughs> I actually deleted uh, like the right uh, bottom, uh, the the corner because yeah. I I put my hand without yeah, thinking yeah, you about can it. That's so the I... real. That's the issue with charcoal. Uh, at some point, we are going to explore ink. Um, that will be the next. I'll probably. I know I have for some of you. We already have at some point, probably in May, maybe June. I'm going to introduce, I'm going to throw ink into the mix. Um, and then you'll see. <laughs> but the thing about charcoal that's great about it is you can erase it. And the thing that's not great about charcoal is that you can erase it. So, right, like there's, it's like that double edged sword. Um, yeah. But you're probably finding it's easier to kind of shape things, right? Because you don't have these rigid lines that you have with pencil. By the yeah, way, there's sure. a, a use for your compressed charcoal sort of at the end of the drawing. When you know where things are, there may be a few places you may want to put it. Also, kind of observe how this dark. It's really interesting to see how this light. You don't have to get everything, but kind of observe how this light comes in and out in various ways, and it comes down here more, right? That's where you start to get, you can get as detailed as you want with this. Julia, you're gonna love this material because like you can really get in there. So you might want to go in with your charcoal pencil, not calling you out. I'm just saying, <laughs> I know you, uh, you can go in with your charcoal pencil afterwards and really, you know, do little teeny, tiny, feathery white, you know, lines, whatever it is you want to do. So, so I'm not totally forbidding, right? Like you can come in like this with your pencil when you know where things are and kind of look at, see, that gives a really nice edge that you can't really get from the regular charcoal. And I welcome you to do that. But first, I want you to get the sort of basic building blocks in before you start going into detail. But that's what's really great about this. Um, I will show you a way to fix it. Um, if you happen to have hairspray, or uh -huh. if you have this low odor stuff, this stuff, so you can, so I'm shaking it, it's a little stinky. Hairspray works, not the pump kind, but the spray kind. I can spray this. It will often help a charcoal drawing. And then it takes about, I'll show you, once you spray it, it stops shedding. So you can, this is what we call fixing the drawing, which you can do at the end. You can actually fix this and work over the top of it too. So if you're feeling like things are too mushy, you could actually spray your drawing at any point, let it dry. Um, in terms of the black fingers, yep, that's just what's gonna happen. Uh, and then in a couple minutes when it dries, you can go over the top with more. But you can never erase what you fixed. Yes, you cannot erase what you fixed, although you can cover over most of it. Um, on top. So it's a, in a way, it's a little bit like painting. Everything I'm going to teach you is going to be like kind of like painting. That's right. So you might not be able to add some lights. Well, let's, we'll see. Yep, you're right. Cannot erase what you fix. So you maybe can't. Um, it should kind of, if you're looking at this, it's kind of pushing my lights and darks a little bit. So. My darks are getting a little darker. My lights are getting a little lighter. Uh oh, hopefully I can, I realize I have this way too big. So hopefully I'll be able to fix that. Maybe not. It's looking good, everybody. Looking good, Osiris, looking good. I know it's a different way of constructing a drawing than using a pencil. But I think in some ways it helps you simplify more.
How's it going over there, Sandra? Well, sort of okay. The cat was up to some mischief while I was in the kitchen. Your cats know. The rabbit <laughs> I left her drawing ready to be painted. Never. <laughs> and thinking I hadn't started to paint, so it was okay, but no, he was sitting on my painting and played with the water. So I have dirty paw prints <laughs> and lots of water oh, on my painting. What a That's little charming. Shame. That's charming. <laughs> keep, keep the paw prints. I think I think he's I think it's sort of yeah I think it's sort of little shithead patty but <laughs> I I you just sort of accept and, when you have cats that they have a shithead side <laughs> and of course by the time I noticed he had made himself scarce right because <laughs> he knows he knows mommy doesn't like that shit <laughs> You know they want to get ex they get excited. Animals get excited by art. They want to well, be involved. Just, they want to do whatever I'm doing. They want to, but yeah, but they like art supplies. Art supplies get them excited. And well, he likes water. All the wrong he like, ways. likes the water pool. <laughs> Bengals love water. Muka just tends to like to be around it. But when I lived, I remember when I lived in a small studio apartment, she often has like paint or pastel dust on her of different colors. That was 10, that was like 14 years ago, Sandra. So she's obviously survived. <laughs> Whatever. It's good to know because I was always worried about that. No, they're all right. If they've got a hearty constitution, they'll be fine. It's just that they're much smaller constitutions and so they can get poisoned more easily. Yep, yep. I get it, but she is. And you guys have an hour. So this is, you have plenty of time to work on this uh, assignment. Oh, dang, you're right. So I probably sprayed this a little too soon because I can't get my eraser to work now. So you don't really want to spray till the end. Even my electric eraser is not, is kind of fighting. So that shows you how well this stuff works. I kind of could. It makes a very funny noise, the eraser.
And while you're working on this assignment, since we are at the end of the quarter, quarters are always good for reflecting on things. I want you to think about, I want you to sort of think back to January and where you are now versus where you were in January. And I'd like you to think about that. We'll talk about it at the end of class. I'd like you to think, uh, art is like a series of little tiny successes. One brick at a time, you build this sort of wall of success. Um, it's small, it's tiny, but actually if you look back, I think all of you will see a kind of shocking amount of growth, but I'd like you to think about it. Um, the other thing that happens in art is of course you get some skill and then you're like, oh my God, there's so much more I don't know, <laughs> right? <laughs> so there's this constant like wanting to push up your skills. But I want you to think about what, see if you can say what you got out of class after one quarter of studying drawing that you, you know, that maybe you got out of it from the beginning. Trouble is having a blast in the garden because there's all sorts of things flying. <laughs> Such a great time of year. Master Rabbit, there you are. What did you do to my painting? I don't know what you're talking about, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Mommy. You're crazy. No way. <laughs> I don't know anything. Did you play with the water while I sitting on my painting? I don't understand what you're... What? I don't... I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the look he's giving me. Yes, he's obviously what? eating something delicious and he's looking at the lips. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> huh? What watcher? <laughs> they are lovely little shitheads. We love them, even in their shit. Actually, sometimes it's their shithead stuff that's the funnest. <laughs> well, that's what teach me. I normally know to remove my painting before I leave the room. I put it on the easel. But in this case, right. because I haven't started painting, I thought, what can possibly go wrong? Right. <laughs> Never ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go you wrong? Go wrong. <laughs> she didn't mean it, gods of the. <laughs> she didn't mean it. She didn't mean it. She didn't mean it. <laughs> Hmm. oh yeah julia see so nice huh 
So it. just make sure this area is kind of contiguous, right? It looks a little bit, I would just keep shaping this a little bit with your light. Yep. <clears throat> and then I would go in with, uh, start working in the background. Maybe add one of these guys in, maybe add, isn't it? It's, it's interesting how much detail you can get. Nice work. It's so fast. That's what I love about it. It's so fast. Yeah. Get buried. Um, yeah. With a pencil on this. Yep. Just, that's exactly. That's, that's exactly right. You get buried with the pencil. Uh, um, that's why I have everybody try charcoal because it's an entire. You're much more likely to see the pieces, right? The bigger pieces and work from those, as opposed to this like detail. Um, and there's a certain kind of texture that just happens naturally, right? As you kind of lay the charcoal down that you don't get with pencil. There's a kind of softness here, right? A kind of like not exactly so hard a line, a little bit of back and forth that does some of the work for you. I am a very lazy artist. I wanna get my marks, the fewest marks possible to do the most amount of work. <laughs> so when I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm using materials and when I'm thinking about my work, I'm like, okay, what areas need the most detail? What needs the little, what material is going to give me the most bang for my buck? One stroke in charcoal is like 30 marks in a pencil. Mm. Mm, very nice. Very nice, Francesca. Um, I would make these light areas a little bit bigger, right? Okay. And this line is looking a little stiff to me. So I think it should yeah. be coming down more. Um, and I think that will happen. See how it kind of rolls right into these big fluffy light areas? And okay. this is a little bit bigger too. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so this is looking kind of block. I like it, but it's looking a little blocky. And as well, observe the light that kind of comes down here. That light is really defining in this petal and in this petal. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 It's yeah. It should be bigger. But it's yeah. nice, isn't it? It's interesting. Yeah. Entirely different. Yeah. It's completely different. Completely, yeah, completely different. different from. I mean, it totally yeah. looks like a pansy to me. <clears throat> I don't know if there's a different word for it in Italian. Is there a different word for it in Italian? Is there a different word for pansy in French? Well, it's pansy, which actually pansy. is the same in French. It's the same word as in okay. thought. Mm -hmm. What is it in French? Pansy. Fancy. But I, I think it's uh, um, a violetta mammola, maybe. Violetta. I'm not violetta. sure. Violetta is it? Oh, I'm sorry. Is what it is it in Italian, right? In uh, Swedish, is, it's pansia. 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 So this is one of I'm those not... words that kind of translates across. Yeah. But... yeah. I, I love just love, I love these language. pansies because look at this. I always see this grumpy little old man shouting. Rah! Yes, you're right. <laughs> I'm looking it up. It's Viola del, del Pensiero. A Viola del Pensiero. Okay. Di Viola del Pensiero. The what? It, it means uh, uh, del Pensiero means of uh, thinking. 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 <laughs> It's yeah, violet of violet. Is that thinking of violet or violet thought? The, the violet of thinking. In, yeah. Violet of thinking. What a romantic way to talk yeah. about a flower. <laughs> That's wonderful. They all sound similar. Ex well, except for except for the Italian one, just adds this whole level. <laughs> to the well, but it's interesting because in French it is a, a thought. It's the same word as a thought. Pansy. Oh. Ah. Really? Yes, unless it's not spelled the same. Let me double check. Oh my God. And then how is it spelled in Swedish? In Swedish. Yes, it's the same exact spelling and, and oh the word as Oh, thought. so there is, so it's already there. 
it's already so sort it's of built the, in as a double the notion name. already. Yeah. Oh, so fascinating. Now I'm trying to think if we have that in English. Um, I can think of the word ponder. I can think of the word pause. I can't quite see thinking no, in the same there's, way. Yeah, there's no link in English. <laughs> Except for the probably, you know, the romantic. Except language that language. The, the sound is all very similar, like even in right. Swedish. Apparently. Right, right, right. So the question is what things kind of come over and what, you know, doesn't. The I, I think that's all, that's culture too, right? Like how you culturally, how the language shapes, how you use the language shapes, how you use it. You guys would know this more than I do. Uh, so it comes from Latin, the etymology, mm -hmm. and from Latin it comes from to think, pensare. To think, pensare, so... And it's like Spanish, pensar, think. French, yeah. pensé. Yep. So, so we um, just didn't like... Very much this notion of a thought. Yeah. Wait, consider. That's interesting. I wonder why. But it's true, it is a family of Violet, I can see. That. My husband speaks three languages. Which ones? Which ones, Osiris? Espanol, y francés, y harmon, sometimes German. But he speaks Spanish, French, and English. Speaking patois. Does anybody know what patois is? Well, why? Right? It depends Creole. from which country because patois just means. Uh, oh, patois. I thought you said patois. This patois I'm talking about, in, I'm talking in about French, Northern, French, in Northern Belgium, Creole. in Canadian. No, mine is Creole. French from French New Orleans Creole. So I grew up speaking patois. So it's really fast and you never know what somebody's saying. <laughs> we were laughing the other day because my mother was like, get in there and I don't care if you don't know what y'all are saying. Listen. <laughs> understand what he's saying. Uh -oh. I don't get it. Uh, just as a reminder, Marie's last landscape class is tomorrow. If you can make it, you should. I don't know what she's doing yet, but I know it'll be good.
not her last, last. I'm going to get her back, but giving her a little break. kind of a nice rhythm you guys are getting into, isn't it? Nice. Did you guys hear about that big flood over in Australia? Mm -mm. It was like a tsunami. My daughter was in that flood, so we've had a really rough week. This What's whole she doing week. in Australia? Did she just? Well, she, they, just she and her she and her partner live in New South Wales, Ugh. and so that whole area flooded like a tsunami. They weren't expecting it Boy. to get the waters to rise that high. And it was like a big old mess over there. This was like yesterday, or. No, 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 it was oh, like a week ago when it happened. Uh, yeah, it was all over the news. Yeah, there has been a lot of floods because we've had a lot of rain. And there's been melting of, of Arctic snow caps and shit. But right? I don't think, oh, right. But I for mean, them, it was like they've had torrential rains. Yeah, she said the water rose up so fast, they weren't even able to get up to the second level. You know, because they weren't expecting it. It just like rolled in out of the blue or something. Yeah, you can have that when uh, rivers to suddenly burst for banks. It happens very quickly, yeah? Floods like um, rivers of murds and all this. Everybody's always like so surprised and it's like, uh, nope, <laughs> that's the, that's how this goes. Yeah, is everybody okay? Osiris? Are they My okay? daughter completely, she completely lost her place. So she had to, they were living like right up the street from each other until they got married. Uh -huh. And then so they moved up. She had to now move in up the street. And so they're displaced. They lost all of their things, their cars, everything. Wow. Shit, that's terrible. She kind of losing her mind a little bit. She calling her mommy a lot. <laughs> no, but I had to remember that even though they're mature children, they're still babies. So mm -hmm. I had to kind of slow your babies. <laughs> your talk babies. to hold my babies, you know. Sure, they always will be. Or things. I know. That's really it's, terrible. Oh. Forgot to, you have to insure your internal property, like your computers, and they didn't have anything insured. But, ugh. 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 Home insurance is important. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, very often, yes. And, and here, uh, earthquake insurance too yeah if you can get it because there's places 
where they yeah, so you're right. they won't give it to you. Right, dying. Or it's going to be like um, it is? prohibitive. For earthquake? I don't Very know. much so. In San Francisco, you'd be lucky to get it. Most people are not insured because it's too expensive. But it is expensive, but I think it's the, the uh, fire insurances that are hard to get, but I don't think earthquake. No, I know a lot of people who are not insured. They just can't afford it. Yeah, that is another thing because it, it is, we weren't insured for the longest time because I couldn't afford it, but now we are. Uh, and, you know, we're like one mile, mile from uh, the epicenter of the 94 quake. Uh, but it is expensive, that is for sure. So youngsters, for instance, wouldn't be able to, yeah. to I mean, afford it. Our insurance with 20% uh, deductible, because that's all I, I can afford, 20% deductible, uh, is still $150 a month. Mm. That's a lot, see? Yeah, it and is. That's just for earthquake or is that for everything? No, that's just the earthquake. <laughs> just <laughs> the earthquake. Just, uh, uh. But for, for our rental in the back, the little house we have, uh -huh. that, that's on the slab and it's only one story. So that's cheaper to insure. So that that building is $300 a year. So that's how big a difference it is. Wow. Uh, because because it's one story and it's on a slab. Uh, What's a slab? When it's on a concrete foundation, it is not. Because raised. yours is not? No, ours is raised up. It has. Oh, it, okay. Yeah, it has a crawl space under it that's maybe three, four feet. Right. And it has two stories. And those are the factors that makes it more expensive. But it's also a much bigger place, so. Yeah, 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 and it's a much bigger place. That's true, that too. A rip, it's a rip. <laughs> yeah. It is, I mean. It's, it's, like, it's like car insurance, you need it, but you don't really wanna have to use it. It's kind yeah. of one of those things you pay for and you're like, I don't really want to use this. Car insurance is very affordable compared to this. Yeah. It is. Even and though it's also it's pretty much compulsory, at least to third party. Yeah. yeah. Insurance. So you never find yourself, well, you rarely find yourself in that situation with this kid. Yeah. Insurances in this country are extremely expensive. They yeah, are. I find in the UK they're much better. But, uh, yeah, in Sweden too. Not to mention health insurances. Right. Oh, but, uh, yeah. You know, one of my friends lives over in Sherman Oaks. Their gas is like $8 and something, you guys. Is it's it expensive. like going up that high in your area, Diane? $8 a gallon? Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. it's like uh, it's like uh, eight oh two or something. No, Where do they live? but it, I mean, he posted it on might... Facebook just so people could see that it's that high over there. Wow. Yeah, Where? it's not that everywhere in not even in Sherman Oaks. So, I mean, the it's like four or something now, or maybe five. Ooh, maybe five. It's um, up to like seven eighty nine in some areas. People are posting it so people can see. I don't know if it's individual service stations or they're doing it because yes, people it live in a Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's here, out here, they raise the gas. Like a buck, right? A so, it's, so it's six bucks here. Mm. Six bucks where I am. I just bought gas yesterday and I didn't even look. <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> I need it. But it means I'm not even looking. Well. But it's still, I mean, six bucks, it's not long since it was four bucks. So. But California is expensive. Do you plan to drop them again or are they going to stay up high like that? Well, let's see what happens with Russia. Oh, going up. 
everything's going to go up and it's going to keep going up, I'm afraid. Yep. yep. We're in a pretty bad situation now, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get I love you guys all now if something happens. Yeah, right. So if you read it, if, but I'm just worried if it, it's for me, I love you I too. I wish all of you the best. Thank you. <laughs> right back at you, babe. For me, I'm like, okay, it's just when the when the electrical grid goes down. Yeah. <laughs> One has to really rethink. Yeah. I'm, 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 it goes down. I, I wish I could afford solar power and I, me too. I, but if the electric grid goes down, it's, that'll you'll still be affected by that. It goes through the electric. Yeah, grid. I don't think it solves everything. No, but so you, can have the a, you can have a battery that you store it in. You can have yeah, it, but yeah. it doesn't store that long. Battery. It doesn't store that much. Doesn't gen, does a generator back it up? Like you know, you could use it. Yeah, yeah a no, generator yeah. works, but you also doesn't the generator need a yeah a generator works for a while. Yeah. It won't but you need to, it you need to have on one uh, installed. It's complicated. Yeah. You need petrol to run it. I mean, yeah. Oh. yeah. I remember last year we had a big uh, snowstorm and uh, our electricity went out for like two days. <laughs> and I was a disaster. I remember thinking, oh, I'm so tough. Like, if I'm, I'll just like, you know, and I, I just sat on the couch wrapped in a blanket eating cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to eat fatty things when you cook. Can I do right? And the cheese was all going to go bad anyway because there was no. <laughs> oh man, it was cold, I went The cheese was not so... going to go bad. Uh, what did you do about your animals? What did you? I do mean, about the we all we all like went into the one room of the house that has a fireplace. Yeah. It was really cute. Hermes was like, this is the best thing ever. He was all stretched out, like really, <laughs> like staring at the fire, just uh, totally fascinated by it. I had, I had found that I have a fireplace in this room, for instance, and this room is, I mean, it's, I'm only touching the house on one side and on the three other sides, I'm not touching anybody and there's nobody above the roof. Right. But it doesn't heat that much. It maybe brings it up to Fahrenheit which is like one Celsius, and that's it. You right. can never rely on it for heating. Right. No, it's because it's... Um, no, it wasn't that warm. It was OK. Um, because it's the American type of fireplaces there. Right. So. Probably oh, Osiris looking yet. lovely. Looking lovely. Um, Osiris, you might want to fill in a little bit more dark over here on, on the sort of right bottom petal. You might want a little bit more dark there, but I love it. It's looking great. Looking great. Anybody else want to share theirs? Bettina, yours mm -hmm. is looking great. Everything's looking mm -hmm. great. These are, are you enjoying this? It's fun, isn't it? All right. So this is a really good moment to see if you can tell me something that you can do now that you didn't, you couldn't do before, before, before January. Any thoughts on that? Anybody want to share Mine on is that? Focused. Yeah, you're you're getting much more focused in class. That's totally true. <laughs> That's good. Um, part of the focus is you know what to do, right? You have a task, and you know what task to focus on. I think that helps me always. It directs my mind rather than my mind goes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly what the mind does. <laughs> it's what my cat's mind do. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what my mind does until I like start doing art. <laughs> um, anybody else? What else have you got out of this quarter of art? I would love to know if you can put words on it. That would be great. I, I, I learned uh, how to um, where to put shades. Mm -hmm. For example, when we we did uh, the exercises with uh, like uh, geometrical uh, figures. Uh, like yeah. cylinder, and I learned um, how to like um, put the shade uh, uh, in, in the uh, right place. In the right place, yeah. like thinking about where the light comes from, and the showing like uh, uh, the depths of the depths of the figure. Right. Instead right. of having a flat uh, surface. Right. Yes. That is a wonderful thing to learn. It's and it feels sort of overwhelming, but it's practical, isn't it? It kind of makes sense. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, no, and gives like um, and helps helps me to like to have a, a a drawing that is not flat but is uh, as a three dimension basically. Right. right, that's excellent. That is a wonderful thing to get out of three months of drawing. Um, what else? We what got else? the community. We have our community, of course. Yes, that is like. Absolutely, so key. Our community. For the community. <laughs> Can I show it to you, Leo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Sandra. Hold on. It's I'm better than yesterday, it. but it's still You're not getting good there. Enough You're getting there. You're getting there. That's okay. It's one step at a time. Okay. Lovely. It's very hard. I'm not sure what I'm going to do more. Um, you might get sick of it. For that one, you need a background. What? Yeah, you need a background. Maybe she should well, experiment with that. Try that purple stuff. Try the purple thing. Oh, no, it's too late now. But the is whole it? point of what is that you could go do it in advance and go over the flowers and the thing. Now it's too late. Um, okay. I can't go over the flower now. I'll destroy it. Um, I'm not inclined to ruin it with a background. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not when it's a beauty. I've been uh, proving it because it's so it it's so <laughs> faded in color, so it needs something to make it, needs it a pop. pop. Yeah. yeah, it needs to pop. Yeah, oh, to pop. But That's Tina, my gonna... opinions, Sandra. It's only but my what color for painting? What well, color? yellow, yellow would be the pop color. Yellow would be the. But then you're going to tell me it competes with a flower. Uh, no, I would say that when you put them next to each other, they push each other forward. Maybe a neutralized yellow. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh. Maybe, uh, or maybe like a uh, maybe ochre. Maybe ochre might work, or maybe oh, yeah. very okay. light splashy. Maybe very light splashes. Just depends. I mean, it depends on how attached you are to that that particular painting. You mean whether I want to, after having spent two hours doing it, whether I want to ruin it in five minutes? <laughs> well, if, if you think there's something to ruin, then it's in better shape than you than you're than you're saying right now. If you're like, I'm going to, uh, I this is I ruined it. I haven't ruined it yet, but I can with a background. No, that's not how you look at the background. It is in watercolor. It's it's. It's a big problem. I don't control the washes very well. It's going to be washed out. It's very difficult then to be outlined. To, then you need to practice it. If you don't control it, you need to practice it. Maybe I should have done a green. I could do a very light green. Yeah, you can do that too. Isn't it, isn't it more that with watercolor, you have to prep it so you put it in first? No, if it's not going to do it, I would have to do it much easier if I'd done it first. Yeah. I can do a very light green because then at least I don't have to worry about the leaves too much. Anybody else? A green like this? Sure, that's pretty. Go ahead. Okay. Let's see. Anybody else have thoughts on this? What did you get out of this quarter of drawing? What do you think you can do that you couldn't do before? I'm feeling better at measuring. I was going to say measuring as well. Okay. More quickly, not that it's easy, but I, I it feels like it's a little faster. Maybe. I agree. I totally agree. I think I, I can see that, Bettina. Um, I can see that that's a that the progress that you've made in that. And I think that's hard one, right? And you don't, it doesn't go away. You do have to keep practicing it, which is why we move to different subjects to kind of see how the same principles apply, how we need different things to think about certain certain areas. But I agree with you. I think you have gotten. Uh, this concept of measuring and evaluating has gotten better. It's good. 
Also, I learned to lay my pencil on the side. Ah, yes, lighter. <laughs> What does that mean? So um, she, it yeah, doesn't, it's, it's not so way. hard. It's not so hard, right? I get, and you cover more surface. In fact, you can, you can sketch in easier and the lines aren't, when you're pushing hard down on the pencil, it's harder to get rid of the lines. But if you're oh, laying okay. on the side, you're okay. so used to using the paintbrush, Diana, you don't even, you're not even thinking about the pencil because you're like, if, whatever. If you're a pencil person, there are some, uh, um, spe I've got one, there are some special, um, how do you call it to make the, my brain is mush, uh, to, to make the paint of the, the pencil sharp, a pencil sharpener. There are spe pencil sharpeners that actually uh, uncover much longer part of lead exactly so you can do that easily. Interesting. Yeah, I had that, that's crazy. That's the type of pencil I have when I draw. People right. who, who like pencils, that's what they use. Yeah. That's that's what I do when I draw wherever it is, you know. Um like this. It's like this, and you can pull it out as long as you want. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, but that's a that's a that's not a pencil, is it? Yeah, no. but it has a thick, it has a Thick, I meant thick, a pencil sharpener, head. so that's that's the way you just sharpen pencils. I they have very them. long leads, so you use no more wooden okay. pencil. But I feel three year old pencil. Okay. I, I know everybody has a different like uh, a subject, uh, like material that they like, and that's why I like to review the different materials because. You never know what you're good. You don't know on. what you're gonna like, and each material teaches something. So I'm almost done with background. It's not ringed yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so brave! You're so brave. <laughs> well, the green inspired me. Because I thought at least I don't have to worry too much about the leaves if I run over them. Do you feel sp particularly brave now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I'm going to show it to you in a second. This is probably the hardest thing for me to master. Look, it's not bad. Not too bad. It's nice. It's All better. right, everybody. Let's hold our papers up. I'm going to remove uh, the spotlight for a second, and I want you to go into gallery view and hold up your works. Oh, there you go, Diana. They're coming. He's coming. And you meant hold a much your... darker background, Diana. Yes, I did, but... Yeah, <laughs> hold it on. Hold it up just for a second. You've got another 15 minutes, but I wanted oh, to see wow, where we're at. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Beautiful. Guys, these are all oh, great. Wow. These are all great. Wow. That's pretty. Wow. Everything's coming. Everything's beautiful. coming. Beautiful. Francesca and Osiris, if you want yeah, to send pieces um, across uh, the thread. Yeah, sure. It's nice to see everybody's work like this, isn't it? Yep. Okay, now I'm going to spotlight so you can go yes, back to that if you want part. to. Just to see, the whole idea is for people not to be doing the same thing, but to learn. I think everybody's got this one. It's a great way to end. It's a great way to end our quarter. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Francesca, looking great. All right, you've got 10, 12 minutes left. Let's see what we can get done. I like this last little push. Okay, I made it a bit darker. 
Ooh, it's Osiris, good. that's lovely. I love those colors. And I love the, God, you guys, these are looking great. So great. I'm proud of you. You're all doing great. Teacher. Yes. And wonderful friends and supportive family. I have yep. a quick advice, please. Yes, ma'am. Should I have like mottled green, like dark? I actually bits? like that. Yeah, I actually good. like that clean. What are you thinking, Diana? You say yes. I I would I would have it uh, on your right side. I would make it darker. Then, okay. Uh, oh no, yeah, that's a good. Side. The other side, that side. Yeah. Yeah, but but uh, still kind of. Uh, I like that clean background. Yeah. I think it's got a nice contemporary look to it. Okay, leave it then. Don't listen. Not too late. No, no, no. I, I think you're right, Diana. Just not to not to sponge it off, not to make it, you know what I mean? Like make uh -huh. it darker on the one side. I love the idea of making it darker on the one side, but keep it clean. Yeah. Well, yeah but, 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 but not clean. sort of dotty. I can't do a, I can't do a, a graded wash anymore. I mean, yeah, yeah. So I like that clean, I like that clean look. I like the idea of having it a little darker on one side, which gives it, that's a very uh, good Diana trick to work your backgrounds and just add a little bit of variation, but not too much. I've, you'll see her do it over and over again in her paintings and it's a very clever it. way of handling, like kind of creating a varied background while not being too complex. <laughs> Yeah, you're badass. Handle it. Handle it. It's Excuse? getting worse. No, so it's like stop that. it, Sandra. Like this. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but see, it's not worse. getting worse. Yeah. Yeah. Stop yeah. it. Now you're done. Now you're done. I love it. Love it too. Great idea. That love shows a nice shift. That gives you a nice variation shift. The eye without being too complex. It's a great idea. Multiple course. He did that well, Sandra, without messing it up. I would have. No, no, I kind of messed it up. But that's how it is. Okay, you guys crack me, Sandra. You crack me up. This actually, <laughs> usually when she's doing, I've now worked with Sandra long enough to know that when she says, "Oh, it's terrible," is usually the moment she's starting to push into the next Gorgeous. level. It's the moment Beautiful. she's starting to rise. All right, ladies, I have to go meet the ambassador of the oh, Enjoy. And uh, I will see you soon. I love you all. Have a great we week. Love you too. Bye, Bye. Uh, we'll see you oh, in two well, weeks. Ciao. No class next week. We'll see you in two weeks. Well, that's it. Hmm. A little vendor. <laughs> I'm sleeping happily next to me. He doesn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he is a little vandal. I think my cat's all inside and I'm freezing and keeping the door open for them. That's what a good mommy does. That's definitely what the best cat mommy does. With you. Okay, you excited? Point must line. Mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Lion's usually the one that tries to get, gets that breaks out through the fence.
Did you break out, Sunny, from the room? Oh, good doggy. Clever doggy. That's not what her daddy thinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. I found my lion. He's in the basement, <laughs> sitting on a warm blanket next to the heating pipe. Oh, there you go. All right, you guys, we got about five minutes left. What can you do in five minutes? I'll send you the final picture. Yes, please do. Actually, it's not bad. It's well. See at the end. I mean, I'm, thank you for pushing me in the background. I need to master the. We're pushers, that's for sure. <laughs> it's interesting to observe one's process, right? In this, observe where your anxiety, where one's, not you, where one's anxiety gets high, uh, where you feel. And that's very often the place where something interesting is happening. Uh, and you have to kind of ride the anxiety or recognize it. Yeah, it looks great, Sandra. I like the background a lot. It helps. Did you send it? Yeah, she did. She sent it across the thread. Um, it does really help. Yeah, I like that, Sandra. Yeah, that was You're right. It's better with yeah. it. It does really help to like kind of try to say to your voice chill the fuck out <laughs> or hey i know what this means this means i'm actually going somewhere good i'm not going to let you stop me anxiety <laughs> yeah but uh, i also i like the idea of doing it first uh, the other day in fact i was paint, i was going to do something i think it's an iris and i painted the background first and it was so awful i gave up right then, then. Right. And I, I would rather ruin it straight off rather than spend two hours doing yeah. painting than ruin but, it. But you, but don't, you, can't, you don't know what the background is until the foreground is done. No, no, I think in watercolor, you, you often do it first because it's so difficult afterwards. Uh, I disagree. But, I disagree. That's why I, I need a watercolor teacher. Leo. There's yeah, a but guy I, who does amazing backgrounds. I find find a guy who can do that for you. But I'm gonna say that the principle is still the same that Diana's talking about, which is that I get it. Sometimes you want to lay your stuff in. Listen, there are some people who paint acrylic paintings with their backgrounds first. But I think that until you got the subject in, you don't really know what is happening with your background. Like you need your background and your subject, they communicate with each other. So you kind of need to know, like you can't really tell until you have subject in, oh wait, what is what is required at the back? What is the Except background is required? You, it's it's not a problem in acrylic, but in work on watercolor because you can't overlay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a huge problem. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah. you know what the I color scheme it. is going to be in advance. Right, right. Um, I get it. I'm just, but understand that the principle is still the same. You still, you don't get away with not dealing with this idea that in a way I still have to see the painting subject down. I, I still think that that's key. I, yes, maybe you need to do more planning. Maybe you need to do more strategy, but like, um, to me, those two things talk to each other. So if one isn't down, it's hard to tell what the other is going to do. Um, that's the only point I'm trying to make here, uh, which is you can, but but I'm sure there are people who can teach you a lot more about watercolor backgrounds. But I think this is part of how do you think they learned? What I don't know. 
they didn't learn by, they probably did not learn by doing it first. They probably, during the background first, they probably learned by laying the subject down and seeing what happened. I just, that's- Yeah, but I, I've, I've done that so many, I've ruined so many paintings, I just not- Right. You have right. to ruin many paintings. You have to no, ruin many paintings? No, you don't have to. The ways of- um... I, I think you have to make many mistakes before you know what the mistake was and how you can fix it. I, it's a skill thing. I agree. Yeah, but I you can't totally get to the skill without making the mistake. There's nothing wrong with a mistake. And there's well, there nothing is, there wrong. is. I mean, it's extremely frustrating to spend several hours on a painting and then ruining it with a background. It's, it's, it's you know, I don't want to work like that. Right. <laughs> um but it's part that, of that the process right. oh bettina that's beautiful yeah you guys these are fucking fantastic oh all right one more time i want to see them go ahead and i gotta remove the spotlight i want you to hold them up go into gallery view hold them up one more time hell yes <laughs> Sandra, your painting makes me smile. Those yeah, colors. It's beautiful. It's so you know, when it touched my brother. It's oh yeah, there we go. That's the <laughs> you didn't like yesterday's fancy. <laughs> you guys, these are incredible. Uh Sand, uh, wow, Diana, I love how the faces are coming along. I really love it. So listen, you guys, I am very proud of you. You look at what you got out of this. Really think about it. What did you get out of three months? Now get excited about what we're going to do in the next three months. Because in the next three months, we're going to be dealing with animals and all kinds of things. And then we're going to be moving to bigger scenes. Woo! Uh, and we'll have three months to work on them. So it'll be like a lot of, there'll be nice, you know, there'll be nice time. Spreads. I bought I bought fifty canvases yesterday, so I have. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and I've got lots of paper. I I also bought um, acrylic, so yeah, yeah I will, wonderful. Uh, I will try some lesson. Yay! Yeah. Come and join us. Yeah, come and a join us. Actually, a friend uh, gave me like bought me the canvas and the acrylic colors for. Uh, as a present so so nice um you're yeah. gonna like it i think you're really gonna like it um and uh we will keep going so you guys have a great week off hope to see somebody tomorrow or, or if you want to join in any of the classes tomorrow please feel free uh sandra maybe one more day of pansies <laughs> we can stand well, I'm it. maybe if i'll we finish my day see this woman see that's the woman who does the background first and it's it's the same color as the the animal yeah, I, I don't love that. She's fantastic. I don't like the background. Really? I don't no, like I would be happy with that. This guy, this guy competes with the animal. Yeah, that is true. Um, although I kind of like the blending. To me, it feels there's a kind of a aura thing that happens when you extend the color out, right? A little bit. There's kind of a little bit of out yeah, of the balance. Then, I agree with you though, Diana. You're right. You're, you're right as well, but I kind of, I still like the bleeding out. I think it's kind of neat. So anyway, we all have our thoughts on this. Yeah. <laughs> my brother thought it was my poor skill with a brush. <laughs> no, it's not. All right. Anyway, we're all get better. We're all going to get better. Imagine what the next three months will do for you. So um, we'll see you guys soon and uh, have a great, uh, have a great week. Want to hang on? To oh or... yeah, do you want me to? Here, I'll um here's uh Diana, I'll make you the host. Oh, thank you. Yes. If you guys want to hang on, you can totally hang on. If not, we'll see you later. Diana, you're the host. I'm gonna pop up. Bye guys, we'll see you soon. Bye. 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 How do Bye. I? Bye. Oh, there Bye. Yes. yes, thank you.